All right, in this video, we are looking at using random samples to describe populations. So remember, if a sample is random and it is a an unbiased sample, then we can actually use that to describe a larger population, right? So rather than gathering data for the entire population, which is usually not possible, uh, we can instead get a smaller sample and use that to describe the data. So looking here at this first example, it says you and a group of friends want to know how many students in your school prefer pop music. There are 840 students in your school. Each person in the group uh, randomly surveys 20 students and the table below shows the results. So we can see you and then four friends each surveyed uh, 20 different people. <clears throat> so you the people you surveyed, two of them said their favorite type of music is country, 13 said pop, four said rock, and one said rap. So we're going to use each of these samples to make an estimate for the number of students in our school who prefer pop music. So if we look at this, 13 out of the 20 people that you surveyed said they prefer pop music. So that's 13 twentieths. And we want to apply that to the total 840 students in your school. So again, we could either uh, find 13 twentieths as a percent and then multiply that percent by 840, or we can set this up as a proportion. 13 twentieths will be equal to how many 840ths? Um, so we know that we can multiply 20 by 42 to get 840. So that means 13 times 42 will give us the correct answer for your survey. 13 times 42. We get 546. So for your survey, that would be 546 people who prefer pop music. For friend A, we had 8 over 20. And again, we want that to be equivalent to how many over 840. So we'll take 8 and multiply by 42. We get 336. For friend B, it's going to be 10 times 42. Right, because we've got 10 people for friend B who preferred pop music. We know that 10 times 42 would be 420. And then for friend C, same thing, 10, so that's another 420. And then friend D was 9, so again that's 9 twentieths is equal to n over 840. So we multiply by 42 here, again because this is a proportion. And we know 20 times 42 is 840, so 9 times 42 we get 378. So now we have you and your friends, five different people have these different random samples. So if we want to kind of get a better idea of what is representative of our population, the full school, we could then describe the center and the variation of the estimate. So you could find the mean, you could find the median, that sort of thing to describe the center. And then the variation, we could use the range, you could use the interquartile range, a number of things. For this one, we'll use the median and we will use the range. So the median, right, if we write these from least to greatest, 336 people, 378 people, 420 people, another 420, and 546. So if we were finding the median, that would be 420 people, right? So we could go with that as our median number of people at the school who like pop music, which is, right, exactly half of them. And then for the range, right, we're just going to take our largest value, 546, and subtract our smallest value, 336, and we'll get 210. So that's a pretty big range. Um, maybe not the most accurate measure of center based on that, but that's okay. So let's look at this next example. You want to know the mean number of hours students with part-time jobs work each week. 
So at each of six different schools, you randomly survey 10 students who have part-time jobs. Your results are shown. So schools are labeled A through F, and then <clears throat> the answers that different students gave are listed next to those. So part A says use each sample to make an estimate for the mean number of hours students with part-time jobs work each week. Describe the variation of the estimates. So let's start with A. <clears throat> we want to find the mean for A. So that's going to be 6 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 4 plus 10 plus 8 plus 7 plus 8, all divided by 10. So 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 6 is 20, plus 6 is 26, plus 7 is 33, plus 4 is 37, plus 10 is 47, plus 8 is 55, plus 7 is 62, plus 8 is 70. And then we're dividing by 10, so 70 divided by 10. For school A, we have a mean of 7. School B, we're going to have 10 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 6 plus 7 plus 12 plus 8 plus 8. So 14, 18, 24, 32, 38, 45, 57, 65, 73. And 73 divided by 10 would be 7.3. Okay, school C. For the sake of time, I'm going to stop writing each of these out, but you can follow along. Here's school C. 10 plus 9, 19, 27, 33, 38, 46, 52, 58, 67, 77. And 77 divided by 10 is 7.7. .7. Looking now at school D, <clears throat> 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus 4 is 20, plus 5 is 25, plus 4 is 29, plus 4 is 33, plus 6 is 39, plus 5 is 44, plus 6 is 60. And dividing that by 10 is 6. School E, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 8 is 22, plus 6 is 28, plus 12 is 40, 44, 54, 62, 68, 80, divided by 10 is 8.0 or 8. Finally, school F, we've got 10 plus 4 is 14, 22, 31, 37, 45, 52, 64, 80, 90. So 90 divided by 10 is 9.0. So this now says use each sample to make an estimate for the mean number of hours students with part-time jobs work each week. Okay, and then describe the variation of the estimates. So we've got multiple means here, right? If we wanted to then find our average of these means, you could take all of these and add them together. So you'd have 7.0 plus 7.3 plus 7.7 plus 6.0 plus 8.0 plus 9.0 45 and that's a total of six schools. We get 7.5. So the average, our mean here for hours worked each week for these students with part-time jobs is around 7.5 hours. And then the variation, right? <clears throat> Uh, the variation would simply be our range here. So the difference from our largest value, 9.0, to our smallest value, 6.0, would be 3. So that is our range. That's the variation of these estimates. And I realize I actually already did this part here. Uh, part B says use all six samples to make one estimate for the mean number of hours students with part-time jobs work each week. 
That's what we just did getting that answer 7.5.